Hey, what's going on guys? This is White Key. Also, welcome back to another Division video. 1.6 and last stand information has been revealed today over on the Division game over on Twitch. Hamish did a live stream with a couple of other people from, I believe, Red Storm was the other company working with them on the Division game. They revealed a ton of information and that's what I'm going to be giving to you guys today. So I just made a ton of bullet points while watching throughout the entire thing. And for some of you, you this may be going up 8 hours after they actually live streamed this. I was busy, so I apologize for that, but I'll do my best to give you guys the greatest of news for the Division upcoming or, you know, whenever there is news being released. So, expect to see videos from me from now on in the future. So, let's just get right into it. First off, no timed exclusives with 1.6 and Last Stand. So, those of you on PS4, you will not have to wait a month or, you know, even a few weeks for the, uh, the, the actual updates to come out. So, you'll get them the same day as Xbox and PC players do, so that is so cool. Another big thing, console players will not be able to obtain the PTS at this current time. Hamish claimed they had really tried to do so, but it had been very tricky. Most likely a Sony and Microsoft decision and not the developers of the division. Possibly in the future, console players will be able to get to the PTS, but not at this current time. Last Stand is a separate experience inside the Dark Zone. You will queue into an 8v8 objective match. Very similar mode to Domination. You must have control over all three zones to capture points. So it's not exactly Domination, but it's pretty darn close to it. And from the foot, the little footage they showed, it looks really, really cool. And this is a big one too. The objective game modes are orientated around both PvE and PvP players. So Last Stand is really just PvP orientated, but within these game modes, or I guess objective game modes, you will have PvE aspects as well. You may pick things up and contribute that way instead of going actually into PvP combat. So that's a way for you to help out your team. This is just a, a fun way to, I guess, bring PvE players into this sort of community alongside the PvP players. So I think that's really awesome and I cannot wait for this. When you are dead, the map will come up from which you can spawn on and see the overview of the current battle. So like your generic Call of Duty or Battlefield 1, I would most likely want to compare that to. Also, you may spawn around your teammates after death to create a more hectic PvP playstyle. That is very cool, so you won't have to just spawn on Objective A and your teammates over there on Objective C. You can actually spawn around your teammate, not exactly on top of them, but in the vicinity so you can get back into the combat as fast as you possibly can, so that's really cool. Another thing to note, you do not lose any XP or credits when dying in the last stand mode, so the objective game modes, it does not tie into the actual Dark Zone ranking system or the actual base game ranking system, so it's its own thing, you don't lose any XP or anything like that, but of course if you do win matches, you do get bonuses. So I may be wrong about this one, but I'm pretty sure normalization means uh, preset classes in the Dark Zone, I don't know how this will actually work, but it looks like during the PTS they will be testing out normalization among gear sets and also without normalization. So I may be wrong, I don't know what normalization really means in this context, but from what I picked up from it, uh, preset classes. I may be wrong, so if I am and you guys know, and I just am being dumb enough to actually not understand what it meant, then let me know down below, I would appreciate it. So this is a big one. Hamish said that there is a new incursion coming, but unfortunately there are no details at this time. So he also said, um, I'm just going to throw this in here right now, within the next 24 hours of you guys probably seeing this video, so somewhere on the 20th, 21st of January, there's going to be some more information based around more PvE rather than PvP like it was today on the 19th. Maybe new incursion details will release very, very soon and I'll make sure to be on top of that for you guys. On to the next bullet point, four fortifications within your zone, three turrets and a pulse beacon may be activated. So when you capture a zone, let's just say Charlie, you activate Charlie. In order to protect Charlie, you may also activate these little turrets and pulse beacon around but going back like i said earlier the pve playstyle within last stand comes into play right here where you have to find materials to actually get those turrets and etc to actually work now i may be wrong on that standard but i'm like 85 percent sure that's what they said so definitely look forward to that that sounds really cool and this is a major major one hamish said it himself and i quote alpha bridge way op Unquote. Nerf will be coming, so that is so awesome. 
Alpha Bridge has been making the Dark Zone very, very boring lately since many, many people have been using it. I'm very excited for this, and I hope you guys are excited for this as well. You will no longer be going up against a group of four who are all rocking Alpha Bridge. He did state, though, that Alpha Bridge is still going to be good, but not OP as it is now. So I'm really, really excited for that. Our next bullet point is leaderboards for the Dark Zone, but no leaderboards for Last Stand. That's kind of unfortunate. Maybe in the future they'll add it. They didn't really touch up on that too much, but leaderboards are finally coming, so I'm very excited for that. Also, this is a giant one for 1.6 slash last stand. There is not going to be any gear score increase. So that is very, very cool. We can skip this update without farming our asses off to get the new gear sets and new pieces to mid-max our actual gear. So I'm really excited for that. We can spend way more time playing the new game modes, checking those out, and, you know, of course, exploring the new dark zones. Now, I'm just not realizing that I was scrolled way too far down on my bullet point list, so I accidentally missed these two first major points that were first brought up in the live stream. First one being Dark Zone North 7 through 9. Mostly built around tactical gunfights, and you can freely traverse from Dark Zone 6 to 7. So the Dark Zone is getting an extension all the way from 7, 8, and 9, and... It looks amazing from what I've seen. They've talked about big things. They said that you can practically fit Dark Zones 1 through 6 into Dark Zones 7 through 9 just because of how tactical, how many routes there are. You can go inside buildings. It's, it's multi-layered levels and pathways. It's incredible. I cannot wait for Dark Zone North. That's actually its official title. It's so exciting. I cannot wait. Another thing that I forgot to mention, of course, I'm putting it here at the end. Just, I apologize guys, it was supposed to be at the beginning of this bullet point list, but this is another major one which I've been wanting for so long. You can now fast travel between checkpoints without exiting the dark zone, but your contaminated gear will deconstruct if you do so. Normally, the same would happen if you were to walk out the door and fast travel to a new checkpoint, so that's understandable. That is very, very cool, and I'm very, very excited for that. We've all been experiencing hackers on the PC, side of things a, a few hackers on the console but for those of you who don't know it's it's a bit d more difficult to actually hack on consoles pcs it's a lot easier and this is awesome they have increased their tracking system to catch hackers once caught you will get a perma band so that is so awesome i fucking hate hackers they ruin the game and i'm so glad they're finally doing more to actually remove them from the actual game so very exciting there as well now to the last few bullet points on this list last stand all that information I already went over, so these last two bullet points are surrounding survival in 1.6. You won't be able to group up or even matchmake into a group session from a solo survival session. So actually the other day, I went into a solo survival matchmaking system. When I got in, I went up against a team of two, and I was like, what the hell? These guys teamed up, which they may have teamed up, but also what they said is that sometimes you'll be thrown into other matchmaking systems so they can fill up lobbies and... In some cases, that's happened to a few of you guys, that happened to me the other day, and they're going to be fixing that. If you're going into a solo survival match, you'll get paired up with solo uh, players as well, and even if you do manage to get everybody, you know, solo, everybody's by themselves, which is their intention, you will not be able to team up, so no more teaming up in uh, solo games, which is awesome, and probably the same goes for uh, two, three, and four groups as well, so very excited for that. And also, this is uh, one I didn't... May, I may not have understood correctly, or, um, I don't know, From but from what I got from it, I, I don't think I'm going to like this at all. You will be required a med kit to pick somebody else from a down state. That, that sounds kind of uh, ridiculous, uh, it make it the, the survival even harder. If I'm misinterpreting this, then please let me know down below, I'd appreciate it, but from what I see, it'll make the survival a bit harder because when your teammate goes down, you're gonna have to use a med kit to revive them. So I don't know how I feel about that too much, but I guess that's all the info we have today on the new 1.6 slash final stand DLC. I'm very, very excited for this. I cannot wait to be playing the actual objective game modes. That is something new that the division has never seen and I'm very, very excited to do so. One last thing though, they do not have an official release date for the PTS for PC players, so expect some news on that coming probably within the week and possibly within the next two weeks of the actual PTS coming out. So, very hyped. I know I've said that like 20 times during this commentary, but 
I'm just super excited. I can't wait to start playing 1.6. I guess I'm going to leave you guys off with that. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like on it and also subscribe to the channel for more Daily Division content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.